React is undeniably one of the most popular front-end libraries for building modern applications, but yet other frameworks like Vue have gained attraction over the past few years. With the new Composition API, Vue has become even more similar to React, but still maintains some tricks up its sleeve. By the end of this video, we'll convert a basic React component into a Vue component to explain how Vue works. We'll also look at why so many developers enjoy and still use Vue. Let's start with the most basic example, a counter. The React counter will let users increment and decrement a value as well as display its value multiplied by two. The React implementation is pretty straightforward. We can simply call the useState hook to store the value of the counter. We'll also add some simple functions to increment and decrement the value. For the multiplication, we can simply assign this to a variable. Lastly, we can link these functions to button click events and display the information in JSX. Now let's take a look at how we can implement this in Vue. We'll first need to use the define component function which accepts an object. Inside this object, we'll define a setup function. You can think of this setup function similar to a functional React component, since we'll be defining all our state inside of it. But this function will only be executed once. Instead of calling the entire function each time it needs to be rendered, it only calls the setup function before the component is initialized. However, it will call the return function each time the component needs to re-render. This is because Vue knows automatically when the state has changed and reacts to it accordingly. To hold the state of our value, we'll use a ref. Unlike React's useState, refs will return an object with a dot value property equal to the value we passed in. Vue wraps it in this object so it knows when the value has changed. We can now simply create helper functions that will mutate our counter directly. In the return function, we will define our JSX and call these helper functions. For the multiplication, we can handle this in two ways. We can do the operation inside of a return JSX function since it's called on every re-render. Or we can let Vue do its magic for us and define it in the setup function as a computed property. Vue will automatically see that it depends on our count value and will update accordingly whenever its dependencies change. You can kind of think of this as use memo. This function will be called when any of its dependencies change, plus it will only be computed if the value is depended on elsewhere. Now we've implemented a basic counter in both Vue and React, but you'll find many Vue developers don't use JSX. Instead, they use a template. To use the Vue template system, we'll need to create a Vue file which contains a template and script section. The script section would simply contain our setup function, while the template would contain the equivalent JSX in HTML format. Any JS variables we'd like to access in our template will need to be returned from the setup function. For event capturing, onClick is no longer supported since this is not JSX. We can instead capture events with an at symbol placed in front of the event's name. Also, to display JavaScript in line, we'll need to use two braces instead of one. The template is just additional syntax on top of plain HTML. For many developers who've been working with HTML, templates feel more natural to read and write. I won't go into detail about JSX vs template since this is more of a tutorial than a comparison, but the view documentation does make a comparison between the two. As you can see, the template gives some additional custom properties we can add to HTML elements. A few more popular ones are v4 and vls, which would be similar to the equivalent ternary statement in JSX. Another one is for rendering each element in an array. In JSX, we would do this with a simple map operation, while in the template we can use the v4 directive. We'll extend upon our counter by simply adding an interval to increment our counter every second. In React, this requires us to call useEffect in order to initialize the interval timer. Essentially, this useEffect is to wait for the component to be mounted in order to initialize the interval, and then unmounted to destroy the interval. On the view side, we don't have a useEffect function. Instead, we have lifecycle hooks and a watch function. In this case, we'd create our interval in the onMounted lifecycle hook and destroy it in the onUnmounted hook. 
But in React, it's also common to use effect to call a function whenever a value changes. In Vue, we can simply do this with a watch function that accepts a single or an array of reactive variables and calls a function whenever they change. When it comes to setting up a project, Vue has a CLI like Create React App. It gives you a lot of different options to control what features you get out of the box, and it even creates a web UI application for managing it. A lot of the frameworks and libraries are also available in Vue. For example, in React, we have Nux.js, but in Vue, we have Next.js. For state management, React has Redux, and in Vue, there is Vuex. There's also many UI libraries that match the equivalents in React. As you can see, there are a lot of similar tools available in React that are also available in Vue. Options also exist for running Vue on desktop and mobile devices similar to how you can do with, with React. In this video, we looked at some of the most basic concepts in Vue 3. Of course, Vue also supports passing props as well as children elements. If you're interested in learning more about React or Vue, you should subscribe and check out some of my other tutorials. I also have a growing community over on Discord. If you have any questions, you should come check it out. Hope to see you in the next one.